unique fades, solid construction, attention to detail. These are some of the reasons why people spend premium prices on Japanese salvage denim. So should you get it? If you're on the rocks about getting a pair, this is a review for you. Hello everyone, I'm Evan and today we're going to take a look at Pure Blue Japan jeans, specifically the XX012s and the XX014s. Pure Blue Japan, or PBJs, are one of several companies coming out of Japan that specializes in denim, and specifically selvage denim. I'll get more specific about what selvage jeans are in just a little bit. Some of the other big names that come to mind with Japanese jeans are Samurai, Ironheart, Ivisu, Momotoro, and Studio de Artisan. And those names are basically what is considered the high-end jeans by denim enthusiasts. The interesting thing is, there's nothing more innately American than blue jeans. I mean, considering that Levi's had started it all for workers during the California Gold Rush. So how the heck did Japan get in on the mix as well? Well, the simple answer is that around the 60s, American manufacturers started changing the machines to projectile looms that was able to produce more denim and on a larger scale. But the faster larger looms also created denim that was lesser in quality. Japanese companies then started to buy up large amounts of those old machines and then went to town. Like many things in Japan, they would taken an idea originating from somewhere else, learned it, tweaked it, refined it in such a way meticulous to the Japanese people and came up with something that is unique and exceptional. And so, Pure Blue Japan Jeans is the product of that transition. PBJs are a bit different than other Japanese denim companies. It's still a salvage denim, meaning it's made using those old shuttle looms that I just mentioned. But PBJs manipulate the machines in such a way that it produces a very coarse, uneven texture. They call it schlub, or schlubbiness. So why does that matter? Well, this results in a very interesting fade process due to the unevenness of its texture. Here, take a look. Another thing that distinguishes PBJs from other Japanese denim are the dyes. Most jeans only dye the vertical yarns known as the warp, while the horizontal yarns, called the weft, are left untouched. If we take a look at this pair of Levi's, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you want to learn more about it, Heddles.com has some excellent articles that talk about how this process works. I'll leave a link below in the description. The ones I have here, the XX012s, have indigo dyes on both the inside and the outside yarns. The other one here, which is the XX014s, has the standard indigo warp, but a purple weft. Yes, purple. And the purple creates a very unique color that is dark blue with a bit of a purple hue. I mean, it's really quite interesting. Just keep in mind that the dyes on most jeans doesn't penetrate into the middle of the fibers. Unless the jeans are specifically made in such a way where the dye goes all the way through, most jeans will fade white the more you wear them. And honestly, these fades are what makes jeans jeans. So, how do PBJs feel? Truthfully, not very good. At least not at first. New, they are pretty starchy and stiff, so it's quite harsh when you wear them. It doesn't have that soft, already broken in feel as if you have when you get a pair of Gap jeans or something similar. They do stretch out and break in over time, and that break in process conforms the jeans to your body which will make them more comfortable to wear. Also, the starches and dyes begin to wear out through washes and wear, which will make the jeans softer and more comfortable as well. So if we look at the 012s, they are stiffer compared to the 014s, which is older and more worn in. You can also see the 014s are faded a lot more than the 012s. PBJs are also narrow across the thighs. These 014s are still tight in the thigh area, even though the waist and lengths are correct. Given the same size, it would feel completely different had I gotten a pair from Gap. So PBJs will not be an issue if you have skinny legs, but you'll definitely want to check your measurements if you do a lot of squats or just have big legs like I do. These jeans, however, create insanely awesome fades that is unique to me and me alone. Here, take a look. 
These fades, in fact, tells a slight story of how I move and how these genes respond to my particular body type. So for example, a friend of mine noticed I tend to put more weight on my left side when I sit than I do on the right. And she noticed that because the genes is faded in the left cheek more than on the right. There are also other fades on this pair which is unique to the way I move. And the way these fades develop is the reason why denim enthusiasts buy Japanese jeans. From the natural indigo used in the dye, to the construction, to the quality of the fabric, not only gives you jeans that are made incredibly strong, but also breaks in and distresses in a way that is unique to you. It tells a story about you. They are your jeans and your jeans alone. Now, if you don't care about any of that shit, then these jeans will probably piss you off after a few weeks and you'll hardly ever wear them again. So I wouldn't recommend buying them if that's the case. So, million dollar question. Should you buy them or not? And the answer is yes, if you're a patient person or you're a hobbyist to the selvage denim world. So you have to keep several things in mind. First, they are not immediately comfortable. They require a break-in period that entails a level of stretching and shrinking and stretching again before it begins to conform to your body. Second, it takes time to develop the fades. Fades like the one you see on designer labels like Calvin Klein or Diesel. Those artificial distresses are what makes department store jeans so pricey. For PB&Js, it usually takes many months of constant wear and that depends on your usage. It may even take several years if you only wear them once a week or once a month. But know that these jeans will easily last for that long and you will have the only gene in the world with that fade because it is unique to you. And finally, they are expensive. They are very expensive. In many instances, Japanese jeans are even more expensive than the designer labels that I mentioned before. You're talking about designer gene prices without the immediate gratification of the designer look and feel. So not only will you be paying the money, but also be putting in the time. So if you don't have the patience for all that, I wouldn't recommend getting a pair unless you have that understanding before buying it. So that's it for this review. If you still want them, make sure you check out the description section below for where you can buy a pair, as well as several interesting articles about Japanese denim. Also, there is a forum called Super Talk Super Future where a bunch of denim enthusiasts put up their questions, concerns, and well, just about anything really dealing with jeans. Hope this helped in making your purchase decision. Make sure you click like if you like this review and leave any questions you have in the comment section below. Till next time, have a good one.